My name is uh, Mike Fodro, and I won the Abe Lincoln Scholarship Award, actually second place, uh, in 1996. Um, I have cerebral palsy. Uh, it's affected me since birth. Um, I was actually born uh, C-section, and uh, the umbilical cord was wrapped around my throat. So probably it was cutting off a little bit of oxygen um, into my brain. Growing up, like I was uh, extremely obese. Um, I had really difficulty using uh, my left side is where the cerebral palsy kind of affects me. So when I was like eight or nine, I was basically in a wheelchair almost, uh, almost full time. Uh, and the doctors thought that uh, you know, I would uh, have to use a wheelchair for the rest of my life. They just didn't see any way uh, kind of around that. I remember um, you know, going to class and being made fun of a lot. But I, I remember, you know, particularly, um, like the girls would make fun of me, um, and that was, you know, kind of at the time when I'm starting, you know, starting to, you know, like girls a little bit or be interested in that, um, and them laughing at me and saying that, you know, no girl would ever love me, nobody would ever be with me, I'd be alone, you know, the rest of my life, um, that I'd never mount anything. I can remember times too, around that same time, like bringing home uh, a report card, you know, that had lots of D's and F's. My parents always supported me. I mean, they always pushed me and believed me, and they always told me that I could be whatever I wanted. But it was really once they enrolled me in the martial art uh, class in uh, Tong Sudo that got me there. Because here was my instructor, um, somebody that didn't know me before, um, somebody that wasn't my family, but took the time to believe in me. Um, he was the first person I really remember outside of my family, which were always supportive, but to really believe in me and to set goals for me. And, and not just to set goals, but he expected me to do them or to achieve them. And it took me four years to take my first test. It takes most people three months, but it took me that long to be ready. Uh, and I remember on that first test, uh, on the second try, I actually broke a board uh, with an elbow strike. Um, so I did that, and uh, I remember when, once that happened, it kind of clicked in my head like, hey, I can do this. Like, this, is, this isn't just something that, you know, I'm here as a token or whatever. This is something I can, I can be good at. And if it weren't for, you know, the Kiwana Scholarship, um, I'm not sure if I would have been able to go um, to a uh, full-time undergrad uh, program. So I don't know um, then if I would have a professional career now um, that I love. My job here um, at, at Tangram is really fantastic. You know, I go out and I talk to um, or the other organizations um, that can help us help other people with disabilities. If you would have asked me in high school if I would be doing anything like this, I'd be like, no way. There is no way in the world I would ever be working with other people with disabilities because I want to be seen in that same light. But as I've grown, you know, I really wanted to give back, um, and I've really come to terms with my own disability that. It's a part of who I am, but it doesn't define me. I, I think back at that, that kid um, you know, in the wheelchair um, who didn't believe that he had much of a future, um, and, and you know, I, I'd probably still be him. I might still be living at home um, you know, in, in that wheelchair looking for whatever little opportunity that I could, but I certainly wouldn't have the, the um, think that the world's my oyster um, as, as I do now if it weren't for, the, um, weren't for Kiwanis and um, everyone else who's kind of helped me along the way.